trains probably aren't the first thing you think of when it comes to the Mario franchise. Regardless, they've played some iconic roles in a few games. But did you know that some of them have a real-life basis? So, just like in previous episodes, I'll be taking a look at the locomotives, rolling stock, and railroad infrastructure seen throughout Mario's history, and compare them to their real-life counterparts. Okay, ad admittedly the majority of the trains in Mario games are pretty cartoonish looking with no real basis in reality, so I won't be talking about those. The first proper train appearance in a Mario game would be in Mario Kart 64's Calamari Desert. According to the game's website, it's known as the N64 Express. I'll also be including its appearance in Mario Kart 7, 8 Deluxe, and Tour as its design doesn't change much. The steam locomotive is based on a 440 American type. 440 derived from the wheel arrangement, 4 pilot wheels up front, 4 driving wheels, and no trailing wheels. This particular design would be developed in the 1850s, featuring a large smokestack, headlight, and cowcatcher. It was popular with American railroads until the early 1900s, coming to be associated with the Wild West, fitting for a calamari desert. The whistle in Mario Kart 64 sounds like a six chime. In 7, it's one of Sierra Railway No. 3's whistles. Quick fun fact, this whistle has actually been used in several other pieces of media because it comes from a Universal Studios sound effects library. And in 8... It also sounds like a six chime. The passenger cars are pretty generic looking, but I guess you could say they match American designs from the mid-1800s. Also, for some reason in 8 and Mario Kart Tour they gave the coaches side rods? I have no clue why, but it's not accurate. Anyway, in 64 the railroad crossing is a standard American design, but the crossing bell sound... is a Japanese variant. In 7, 8, and Tour, the sound is replaced with a more accurate American mechanical bell. Ironically enough, though, the crossing signs are replaced with recolored Japanese designs. Last thing to mention is Luigi dies by the train in the Japanese Mario Kart 64 commercial. Oh, and so does oh Wario in this God. render. <laughs> Next up is Paper Mario's K64 locomotive used on the Dry Dry Railroad. This one is probably more unintentional, but it kind of looks like this 062T built for the Nevada Consolidated Copper Company. This type is known as a tank engine, as the water is stored in a tank and the coal in a bunker on the locomotive, rather than a tender behind it. The K64, however, is missing a bunker for coal. The whistle... I think is literally just a wooden toy train whistle. Tank engines were used for switching, industrial areas with tight clearances, helping push trains up a hill, and hauling shorter trains. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door gave us the iconic Access Express. Its name and mystery plot being a nod to the 1934 novel, Murder on the Orient Express. While the locomotive is mostly freelanced, the nose design may have been inspired by high-speed Japanese Shinkansen trains or American streamliners from the 1920s and 30s. Based on the cab interior, it's likely meant to be a diesel. While the wheel setup may look unconventional, it actually is realistic. Kinda. The concept of pilot and trailing wheels having coupling rods is used on Heisler steam locomotives. With the cylinders angled inward, a drive shaft and gears in the center power the wheels. This setup allows for increased power on cheaply built logging railroads with steep hills. The large center wheels on the XS Express also have some basis in reality. Single locomotives were common on British railways in the late 1800s and early 1900s. They were called this because of their pair of large driving wheels in the center, which allowed for faster speeds. As for the coaches, probably just a generic design. While I'm not totally sure what the developers were referencing when making the XS Express, 
it's still an interesting looking train. Shy Guys Perplex Express is a train theme board in Mario Party 8. This is probably the least cartoonish looking train in the whole franchise. The locomotive sorta of resembles a Japanese government railway's Class 9700, excluding the tender and wheel arrangement. In game, the engine is a 464 and missing a tender. The 9700s were built in the US in 1897 and exported to Japan. There's also some shy guys on a hand car. These were used during the construction of railroads and track inspection. They would be replaced by gas powered speeders and then pickup trucks with railroad wheel attachments. The coaches look like squashed versions of Eastern European designs. Mario Kart 8 has quite the collection of trains. First up is the Animal Crossing track. You might have missed it, but in the background is a train slowly passing through. It's based on a Japanese government railway's Kiha 36900, later designated 41000, diesel rail car. Initially serving as commuter engines, they were later relocated to more rural branch lines. They had a service life spanning from 1932, transferring ownership to JNR, until 1969, whereas others went to private railroads or were preserved at museums. Next up is Toad Harbor. It's a San Francisco-inspired city with its hills and cable cars. If you've seen my Trains of Sonic video, you'll already be familiar with these. If not, San Francisco began cable car service in 1873. A central powerhouse pulls a cable located between the rails and beneath the road. A cable car latches onto it and gets pulled along the tracks. A gripman uses a lever to slow down or stop the car. The Toad Harbor designs most closely resemble the California street cars, known as Cal Cables, but have more rounded ends. San Francisco still sees cable car service today, and the fleet has either been rebuilt or built from scratch using the original designs. There's also a turntable to turn the cars around. Moving underground, we get to the Super Bell Subway. It's a European-inspired track with trains running in either direction as you race on the tracks. You know, like a normal person would. The trains appear to be a conglomerate of various European sets. Something you might not have noticed is the transit map in the station. It uses a style pioneered by George Dow of the London and Northeastern Railway in 1929. It was later popularized by Massimo Vignelli in 1972 with his map of the New York City subway. Going back above ground, we see Mary Mountain has a flying Christmas train, which is a cabless 440 American type. The only interesting thing of note is it uses the iconic out-of-tune five-chime whistle from Canadian National Railway number 3254. We now begin our world tour with Amsterdam Drift. First up is something that looks like a cross between a Dutch Railway's Verm and Talus PBKA. They entered service in 1994 and 98 respectively, and still operate today with Talus providing high-speed service from Amsterdam all the way to Paris. In-game, the train has its own colors and lacks the overhead wires to provide power. Early in the race, you'll see it pulling into a station based on Amsterdam Central. At the end of the track, you'll encounter this tram. It seems to be a cross between designs from the 1920s and 70s. The number 14 seen on the model could be a reference to Line 14 on the city's tram network. Bangkok Rush features a rather unique piece of Thai railroad, tracks that cut right down the middle of a public market, which exists in real life, might I add. The Mae Klong Railway Market has a rail line passing through it. When a train arrives, vendors pull back their awnings and goods, and after the train passes, business resumes as normal. In game, the train idling just short of the market is an NKF diesel multiple unit, first built in 1985 Japan and exported to the State Railway of Thailand. Above ground, we see the BTS Skytrain. Sitting at the station is a Chung Chung Railway Vehicles EMU set. As for the railroad crossing sign, it's pretty accurate, and so is the Mae Klong Station. Heading back to Europe, Berlin Byways not only makes the Berlin Wall canon to Mario, but has a train similar to the DB Class 420 and DR Class 270. The racetrack takes you through Berlin Central Station where the train can be seen. They were built in 1967 and 87 respectively, and saw service on the German S-Bahn network in East and West Germany. After reunification, they were taken over by the nationalized Deutsche Bahn rail network. 
Down Under and Sydney Sprint, Toads can be seen throwing coins out of a yellow train. These are based on the double-decker Tangara, or T-sets. They entered service in 1988, first under the State Rail Authority, then City Rail, and now Sydney Trains. While the actual trains operate as electric multiple units, the Mario Kart versions are diesel multiple units, given the lack of an overhead wire to power them. Paper Mario Color Splash has the Sunset Express. It's another generic 440 American type. Concept art reveals it was originally going to be a 262 Prairie type. The whistle is likely a Japanese five chime. We see another hand car here, but I've already mentioned those earlier in the video. As for the coaches, they seem to take inspiration from American passenger cars from the 1840s to the 60s. Interestingly, the couplers on the train look like ones from Tomy Toy Trains. There's a semaphore signal that stops the train. This signal type was introduced in 1842 on the London and Croydon Railway. They use an arm in colored glass illuminated by a light source to convey a signal. By the 1980s, many railroads had replaced them with all-electric signals, but in some parts of the world and at museums, you can still find them in operation. Last but not least, I wanted to mention this railfan toad. He seems to have some unresolved emotional issues. Okay, so this last train was supposed to be in the Mario Kart 8 section, I forgot to include it, and it would be way too hard to rearrange everything to fit it in, so I'm just shoehorning it in here at the end. Mario Kart 8 also has this flying train on N64 Rainbow Road. The engine looks like smaller American locomotives from the late 1800s and early 1900s. These were built for lightweight or temporary tracks at logging camps, mines, construction sites, and industrial areas. The coaches are simply freelanced. Alright, so that's all the trains I could find in the Mario franchise that look like they could have some kind of real-life counterpart. If I missed any or you found a better comparison, let me know in the comments. Even though I like trains, I don't know everything about them. Like in Sonic games, trains in Mario can usually be fun stage gimmicks or set pieces. Even Mario himself has been plastered onto real-life trains for advertising. So, if you like this video and want to see me talk about other trains in video games, check out the rest of the series. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching. See you next time! Thank you to my channel members, and special thanks to Mooter for subscribing to the Conductor tier.